Okay, we got a Blue Bloods fish report. Breaking news. Reacting the TCU time. Horn Frogs. The TCU Horn Frogs just announced that they've mutually agreed to part ways with head coach Gary Patterson after 21 years. Actually, it's closer to 24 years because he was their uh, defensive coordinator yeah, DC for, first. I think, three seasons before taking over as the head coach. Gary Patterson's out. I mean, that's shocking to me just Big because news. knowing the pillar he's been for that program and the success that he's taken them to, including a Rose Bowl victory, uh, I believe, back in 2009, B. Yep. Holmes, what do the Horn Frogs do now? Listen, man, I know everyone's probably going to have the, the normal answers. Jeff Trailer, even though he just signed an extension, I believe, yesterday or today at UTSA, uh, which to me yep. doesn't mean anything. Anybody can do a buyout. Uh, people sure. are going to say Sydney Dykes. People are going to say Kendall Browse. Here's, here's my dark horse. I know most people probably aren't thinking about this name. I'm going to go get Billy Napier out of Louisiana, mm. man, Raging Cajuns. Um, so I'm looking at his stuff right now. Head coaching record, I know it's still early in his career, but he's 35-12. and 12. He's 2-1 and one in the bowl games. Right now he has Louisiana ranked in the top 25 out of the Sun Belt, I believe. Louisiana's in the Sun Belt. Yeah, which is uh, mm. not, not a sleeper conference, man. You got Appalachian State out there. You got some – the Sun Belt is a quality group of five conference. And Billy Napier, he's young. He's, uh, he's making great moves. I like what he's doing in that. And, and Louisiana has never been known to be like a winning program. So to see what he's mm. doing there and – um. And the program of that stature, which is hard to recruit because you're already competing against LSU, you're competing against Georgia, Bama, Ole Miss, you know, that fertile recruiting ground to be able to keep some of those kids home and to win at Louisiana. I like that. He's young. Mm. It's a great – I believe TCU is a top 20, 25 coaching gig in the country. It's in a fertile recruiting ground in Dallas-Fort Worth. So I think um, the kind money. of – yeah, you got money there. Um, my brother is yeah. recruited by a TCU, so I know kind of how what, what they put into that program. And, and I I like that, mm -hmm. man. I think you go get somebody young who's not um, – who can build something there that's not going to be looking to make the big jump. And I think Napier could be a guy. He's young. He could sow his roots in Dallas-Fort Worth. Who wouldn't want to do that? Um, mm. And you're not starting with an empty cupboard. Um, you can you can stack that talent, some of that low-hanging fruit that might get passed yes. over. And, man, maybe – I'm not going to say he's going to be the next Gary Patterson, but you can find yourself if you're successful at TCU, which is an 8-5, and 9-4, and four, and then you have the mm -hmm. occasional – like big where you kind of 10 11 uh, you, yeah. yeah 10 and 11 season man you can you could be at TCU for a good 15 to 20 years and that's a program that it has uh, national brand recognition which I think is important and it's a recruiting hotbed so I would go Billy Napier if I was, that'd be the first person I call especially with him being so young only being 42 well, and as you mentioned, obviously Sonny Dykes, obviously Jeff Trailer, Kendall Bryles, those are going to probably be the top names that you hear associated with the job. Um, man, I'm going to throw a dark horse candidate out there. Actually, before I do that, if I'm the AD, even though I know there's probably no chance, and you know what, of making this happen, I'm throwing a, a just a Brinks truck load of money at Deion Sanders, Coach oh, Prime, yeah. seeing if maybe I can bring him maybe. back to his home state. Well, I mean, not like where he's from, but obviously he was a it's high home. school coach here in yeah. Texas. He's lived here in Texas. Everyone knows who Deion Sanders is. I know that Absolutely. would be like a pipe dream. However, he'd probably get his boys to come transfer. His two his two sons would probably transfer over. Um, that ain't happening. I'm just saying, if I'm the yeah. AD, I at least make Why the not? call. I write the check <laughs> just to see. My dark horse candidate is a guy by the name of Coach Colby Carthel. Okay, mm. he won a national championship at AM Commerce several years ago. He is currently the head coach at Stephen F. Austin. Last year oh. in 2020, the COVID year, he led SFA to their first winning record in over mm. in not over a decade, but I think in a decade. I think it's been since 2011 since they had a winning record, and then. Um, um, he's from the state. He grew up. He's a he's just like a born and raised Texas boy. In fact, if TCU ends up yeah. landing one of these potentially bigger fish, he's the one I'd say Texas Tech should give a long hard look at. He he is a young dude, yeah. and he's just a coach. He's a players coach. He he's a culture builder. Um, to me, he embodies everything you would want in your program's head coach, and I think he could be a tremendous fit at TCU or Texas Tech. And as I'm thinking about it, he might even be a better fit somewhere like Tech. That's probably who they need to go look at Yeah. Um, in the event that – because I have to think that 
TCU coming open just made it a lot harder for Tech to go get their number one guy. Absolutely. Because I would think whoever's at the Absolutely. top of Tech's list is probably at the top of TCU's list if we really want or to say Or at least on like the list. Yeah, so, yeah. No, and I don't think anybody passes up TCU for Tech. I mean, like I said before, it's a top 25 coaching, coaching job in the country. Fertile recruiting ground. Like you said, money. Fort Worth is so connected to Dallas. I mean, there's money everywhere. And, man, they just did a big facility upgrade, everything they're doing. Like, they're doing everything you know, they need to do to stay competitive um, in, in, yes. the, in the Big 12. And, and making tech, TCU, man, it, it's a good little fan base. So I'm interested to see what they do. Well, Colby Carthel, he's my one to keep your eye on with these uh, Texas jobs that are opening up. You hit us with Napier. Hey, Blue Bloods Fish Report, Uncle Fish, shout out. Trey Smith, Brandon up, Holmes, Uncle we're Fish, signing off. We're out. Peace.